In this video, we're going to learn how to use the Plain Cut tool. The Plain Cut tool can be found in two places. Under Edit, Plain Cut, or if we have a selection, so under Select, and I'm going to create a selection using the Lasso tool, and now I'm going to do a click and drag and select half of my bunny. Now we can go under Edit, Plain Cut. But in this case, we're going to start with the plain cut found in the edit tool. It is the same tool. So I'm going to go to edit, plain cut. And when we first use the tool, you're going to notice that this plain cut is very similar to the grid. I recommend you turn off the grid by going to view, show grid. The plain cut tool has a 3D gizmo in the middle. This is your traditional 3D gizmo. Let me zoom in real quick. You can select these arrows right here to go up and down. We can go left to right. And we can even go forward. We can also rotate by selecting on these icons right here. Here and here. We can also constrain move our plane. So if we click on this green triangle right here, we can move in every direction except on the Y. The Y is the green arrow. And notice that we can move up and down, left to right, but we cannot move forwards and backwards. And the same thing if we select either the X, which is the red color axis constrained plane, we can move in every direction except for the X. And same thing on the Z direction. If I select the Z constraint plane, I can move in every direction except, as you can see, on the Z. On this 3D gizmo here, we also have these buttons, two on the top right, two on the bottom left. L stands for local pivot point. So now the pivot point is set on the bunny's pivot point. So I'm gonna go to my view cube, home. First, let me hit cancel. And now I'm going to bring back our plane cut. And as you can see, W is for world. So the pivot point right here is going to be set to the world coordinates with my Y pointing up and down. On the bottom left, we have these two icons right here. Let me move the plane cut down so you can see this better. So S stands for snap. A stands for absolute snap. You can see the absolute snap when we move in any of the three axes, X, Y, and Z. I'm going to select the X. And as soon as I move this, you will notice that we have this line right here. This is the direction line. And as I move it, it is going to snap from one unit to another unit. And then when I let go, there's my gizmo. You didn't see any differences because I was moving left to right and the plane was in the same space. But if I go up and down, you will see this better. If you want to turn off the snapping, deselect A for absolute snapping. We're still going to get a snapping with the letter S selected, so you have to also disable S. And now when I move up and down, it's a free movement. For rotation, we will also see the snapping. When you have snapping selected and you click on one of the rotation tools, you will see the snapping ticks around the rotation angle. In this case, the rotation angle is on the Z axis. These will be the ticks on the X, and these will be the ticks on the Y rotation angle. I'm going to disable snapping. And lastly, you will see this blue arrow to the right of our 3D gizmo. In order to explain what this arrow does, I want you to look at the options for our plane cut. We have two options right here. We have the cut type. This is going to give us cut discard half of the geometry. We then have slice, keep both sides of the cut. So this will generate a slice with two pieces of geometry. And then the last one is slice groups. This is going to cut the geometry and assign a poly group to one of the halves of our cut. You will notice that we have a gray area to our geometry as we move this up and down. You can see more of it. And then we have a transparent side. The transparent side, if we use cut, discard half, this will be the side that we will eliminate. This is where this arrow comes in handy. 
So you will notice that it's pointing down. It's telling you that you're going to cut, discard half, which is the bottom half. If I switch the direction of my cut, you will notice that we are going to cut, discard half, in this case, the top. When we do so, you are going to notice that Mesh Mixer will create a new shape where the cut will be. This is very important. Under Fill Type, if I turn on W under View, Show Wireframe, you're going to notice if I go inside of our bunny and I bypass the external wireframe of the bunny, you will notice that we have three types of mesh fills. So this one right here is the middle one, remesh fill. We have no fill, which is going to give us a hole. We have minimal fill. This will generate a minimal amount of triangles in our mesh. Then we have remeshed fill. And lastly, we have fixed fill. These ones right here are going to give you tighter triangles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select remesh fill. And as soon as I click on accept, because I have cut discard half, you're going to notice that the top of our geometry will disappear. I'm going to quickly do undo, control Z, to bring my plane cut. Now I'm going to switch what area I want to cut by clicking on this arrow. So now I'm going to keep the top geometry and then the bottom geometry will disappear with this cut discard. I'm going to get rid of my wireframe. I'm going to view show wireframe. And now when I click on accept, you will notice that we're going to keep the top geometry and then we're going to fill the hole. Let's undo this real quick. Now I'm going to change my cut type. I'm going to go from cut discard half to slice keep both. You're going to notice that if I bring my wireframe W, we have a cut in the middle. Now these two halves, the top and the bottom, are one single mesh, two different shelves. So the top part and the bottom part are their own entities. And to see this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Select. And now I have the ability to double click on either the top or the bottom geometry. And you will notice that my selection is going to stop at the perimeter of the shell. If I double click on the bottom one, Mesh Mixer will stop at the end of the shell. I'm going to clear the selection. And I'm going to look inside of the bunny. And I want you to notice that we have two fill caps that we created when we did our slicing. One for the bottom half of our geometry and the other one for the top half of our geometry. So now we're going to separate these two shells. I'm going to go to Edit and we're going to go to Separate Shells. Now when we do this, Mesh Mixer is going to create two objects. So if you look at the object browser, you will see the two meshes. I have the top mesh and the bottom mesh. To change the name in the object browser, all you have to do is double click on this mesh, select the name. So I'm going to name this one top underscore bunny dot obj. And now I'm going to double click on the bottom shelf's name. And I'm going to select everything and name this bottom underscore bunny dot obj. Hit enter. And now we can select either the top or the bottom. I'm going to select the top and now we can go to our edit, transform and using a similar gizmo to the plane cut, I can separate these two guys right here. Or I can turn off the visibility of the bottom piece. On the next video, we're going to learn how to cut specific parts of our bunny by using the selection tool so that our plane cut does not interfere with other parts of the mesh.